I'm kind of curious to see what iPhone fanboys have to say about this video. Trying something a little different for my upcoming iPhone and OnePlus videos. If y'all like it, drop some comments down below. Now, I've been collecting data on real world performance for things like content creation for about four or five years now. It's about time I figured out how to make a decent bar graph. Ha <laughs> ha, PowerPoint. The iPhone SE is rocking a crazy powerful little chipset. Apple makes enormous claims about performance. So let's see how this Mighty Mouse phone really stacks up to some competition. First up, just to get the lay of the land, these geek bench numbers are looking real good. Over the OnePlus 8, this synthetic bench is showing a 46% lead over the Snapdragon 865 in single core performance. Now there have been some conflicting reports on throttling, but from my iPhone 11 Pro review, I'm not seeing any single core performance drop, but there does seem to be some multi-threaded slowing. I don't keep an iPhone 11 Pro in-house, so my iPhone 11 Pro numbers are all from the end of 2019, and we'll talk about that in just a bit. Then for GPU compute performance, the A13 on Metal is producing numbers more than twice as large as the 865 on OpenCL. Funnily, the new SE, like the original, seems to be slightly outperforming iPhones with higher resolution displays. But Apple makes them big claims about performance, so I I fired up my favorite video editing apps and I went to town. My UHD render test takes six clips from my Panasonic mirrorless camera, fade transitions, a watermark, and a soundtrack, and mashes them all up into a one minute project rendered at around a 50 megabit per second bitrate. Kinemaster is a solid cross-platform solution on both iOS and Android, and the SE did really well in this test. Really well. Apple's inexpensive option here tied my LG V60 and only lost to my OnePlus 8 by a couple seconds. Kinemaster updates also place it just ahead of Luma Touch now. Where Luma still rendered this insanely fast, Kinemaster was able to beat it by a couple seconds. When I look back at my iPhone 11 Pro results from December, updates to iOS and the Kinemaster app seem to deliver substantial performance improvements over where the Pro phone was five months ago. I have to believe the 11 Pro has improved some too, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the SE slightly outperforming the Pro for the difference in resolution on the screen. It only took Apple seven months into the iPhone 11 Pro's life cycle to finally deliver some of the content creation performance they touted in their keynote. But I digress. Back to the SE. The transcode test was the more surprising of the two creation tests. I take a two and a half minute UHD sample from the same Panasonic mirrorless camera and I squeeze the bitrate pretty much in half. The A13 on Kinemaster and LumaFusion delivered some hurt on the Snapdragon 865. Those numbers are really exciting, especially considering the number of people who might appreciate simple cut and splice editing solutions. The fact that we can cut and splice that fast, that much faster than how the video plays in real time is really exciting, especially for consumers out there who aren't looking to deep dive on professional grade editing. A couple quick notes to wrap up this first look. PowerDirector is my favorite video editing app on Android and now it's on iOS. So as we get to my full review, I'll try to do some comparisons there too. It's nice having another option, which is cross-platform. We can really compare iOS and Android performance. That being said, I wholly expect Kinemaster to remain the faster option and LumaFusion to offer the more complete editing tool set. I'm still skeptical about synthetic benchmarks touting amazing advantages for Apple hardware. Those synthetic benchmarks show a 46% improvement to single core performance, really close multi-core performance, and over a 100% lead for the GPU. But what we ultimately get in heavy lifting is parity for complex video editing and about a 15% lead for simple cut and splice edits. 15% ain't nothing to sneeze at. I've spent a ton on GPUs for my workstation to get less of a performance bump, but that's not a 46% jump in performance over the Snapdragon. And the most important point for me in these early impressions, the warning that I have to put out there for folks thinking they're gonna grab an iPhone SE so they can get a cheap option they can run really hard like a premium phone, I'm still gonna caution against that. You're not getting an iPhone 11 Pro for cheap, you're getting an upgraded iPhone 8. The main concern I'm already having with this hardware combination 
you're gonna nuke this battery. Setting up and rendering my two tests on KineMaster, ultimately we're talking about processing about three and a half minutes of UHD footage obliterated 30% of my SE's battery. If there's any single reason why someone would want to step up to a $700 phone, it's the battery. Power users, you have no battery buffer here. You're gonna drain this phone quick day to day. Battery health is going to throttle your phone sooner and heavy users should factor in the cost of a battery replacement at some point, maybe twice over the entire life of this phone. That's why we have to treat these phone conversations with that little bit of nuance. A phone is not its processor. The A13 is one spec in the whole scheme of a larger phone conversation. And for that focus, the demographic Apple's really trying to target, this little bugger is a champ. I adore Mighty Mouse phone, streamlined communicator options, and Apple deserves solid kudos for not gimping their cheap phone. I'll have some more to say about the SE as I finish up a bit more of my performance testing, radio, network management, all of that fun stuff. So stay tuned. I think it's gonna be fun. This is gonna be a killer little option to review. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos and subscribing to the channel. More than just squawking out and parroting Apple marketing slides, we wanna know what these devices can really do so we gotta dig deep. If you would like to help support the production of these broader and deeper dive conversations, there are some links down below. And there's also the support page on somegadgetguy.com, but you might consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by on your screen. It's a growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals. It's a huge resource for me as I'm planning future videos and reviews. They're just super cool people, maybe the coolest people, so, I hope you check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next video. Ugh, Juan is such a hater. He's just looking for reasons to trash Apple. I mean, no one really does things on their phones even though Apple heavily advertises this exact kind of use for the iPhone. Ugh, such a hater. <laughs> Suck it, Android losers. A13 in the cheapest phone Apple sells. Even Juan is showing that it's the best. Okay. Don't be that guy. If my performance testing didn't matter to you when Apple was losing most of these showdowns, it still shouldn't matter to you now that Apple is winning some of these performance showdowns. At least try to stay consistent. I mean, people call me a shell.